Tonight, one of the most anticipated Mega Millions drawings in history. $636 million up for grabs. We've got the winning numbers coming up. Plus, with the recent blast of winter weather, energy bills are expected to soar. Our Alicia Dover has some tips on how you can trim your bill. And a woman claims about $250,000 in jewels disappeared from her safety deposit box at a local bank. From KATV, winner of the Edward R. Murrow Award for Best Newscast, this is Channel 7 News Nightside. $636 million. All you have to do to take home the second largest jackpot in Mega Millions history is match six numbers. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Christina Munoz. Scott has the night off. If you bought a ticket for tonight's drawing, you know that you've probably been eagerly awaiting the drawing. So without further ado, here are the winning numbers. Across America with Mega Jackpots, it's Mega Millions. What's up, America? I'm John Crow. It is Tuesday, December 17th, and tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is an estimated annuity of $636 million. To win that jackpot, you must match these five white balls plus that gold Mega Ball. Now, let's see if I can make you a multi-millionaire tonight. Our first number tonight is 8. That's followed by 20. Up next, we have 14. That's followed by... 17, and the final white ball for this Tuesday evening is 39. Now for the Mega Ball. Tonight's Mega Ball number is 7. In tonight's winning numbers are 8, 20, 14, 17, 39, and the gold Mega Ball is 7. Now no one matches all six numbers. Friday's jackpot to be $950 million. Play on, America. And as you just heard, if no one wins tonight, based on sale numbers, the jackpot will be more than $1 billion, with a B, dollars by Friday. That's according to the Arkansas Lottery Commission. And while more sales mean more money boosting that jackpot, it also means pumping more money into the state's scholarship lottery. Channel 7's Maureen Glisevic joins us now with more on that side of the story. Maureen? Well, Christina... Clearly I didn't win because I'm still here. Didn't even get one number, but on a more serious note, half of the money I spent on this ticket is going to the Arkansas Scholarship Lottery because 50% of Mega Millions ticket sales go straight to high school students to help them pay for college. I love Arkansas Mega Tickets, yeah. Feeling lucky, Virgie Harris sings with joy as she purchased her Mega Millions ticket in hopes of winning Tuesday night's $636 million jackpot. And while the odds of winning are better in other states, such as Illinois, New York, and Georgia, half of what Harris spent on her ticket in Arkansas will fund the state's scholarship lottery. I totally support that. That's why I always buy tickets because I want to support because my children are going to college one day. Since spring 2010, around 30,000 scholarships have been awarded yearly to the tune of more than $382 million, helping high school students pay for college. Do you think that for some it makes a difference on whether they're going to attend college or not? I think absolutely. Uh, the a number of students who've applied and have been approved has increased exponentially in the last four years. Uh, the enrollment at our public schools and universities and the private schools and universities has increased. It's great. I think any help we can give children is phenomenal. Again, there is no, if there is no winner tonight, the initial roll will be $950 million. And then by Friday, after ticket sales, the jackpot, more than a billion dollars. And Christina, I'm going to go ahead and cross my fingers, hope that there is no winner. It gives me another chance to get some of that money, right? And you know, eventually, <laughs> you think somebody's got to win. So, hey, you never know. Marine live for us exactly. tonight. There you go. Thank you. Your Metro First Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Ned Permy. Well, the next couple of days, weather-wise, going to be like winning the lottery this time of year as temperatures continue to warm into the 60s and enjoy it because we do have changes to talk about in the long range. And we're going to do that coming up right now. Temperatures have fallen off into the low 40s, 41 degrees. Little Rock, Conway, Maumel, Benton, Bryant, Malvern, 42 at Hot Springs, 38 up at Searcy. Temperatures will be falling off into the uh, well, mid to upper 30s. So another cold night with clear skies and light winds. But then tomorrow, 
well, temperatures moderating again, 62 at Hot Springs, Conway at 60, mostly sunny, 59 at Cabot, and then tomorrow, 56 degree reading up in White County, around Searcy and Benton and Bryant, 62, 61 at Pine Bluff, and in town, 62 degrees with a south breeze at about 8 to 15 miles an hour. We are going to be talking about more rain in this forecast and some heavy rain as well. We'll detail it, and it's over the weekend coming up. Thank you, Ned. We'll see you in a bit. An energy company is warning its customers that bills they receive in December could be two to three times higher than bills the previous month because of these colder temperatures. Channel 7's Alicia Dover is here with more on the changing weather and how to save on heating bills. Alicia. That's right, Christina. Look at the temperature. It may not be very cold right now, but temperatures are expected to drop. And here's how to save on your energy bill. It's been 50% colder this year than last year at this time, according to weather experts. And with this month's ice storm, Centerpoint Energy says to expect a higher bill, as much as double or triple for some customers. The uh, concern that we've got is the consumption for the last billing cycle is going to be drastically higher than the previous billing cycle. Um, the cost of gas still remains cheap uh, and very stable. Our concern is that due to the, the drastic reduction in the temperature, uh, our customers are going to see a higher gas bill this, this, uh, this billing cycle. We went to Middleton Heating and Air for tips on how to save money. First and foremost is getting an energy efficient gas furnace. Uh, Middleton has seen an increase this year of people looking to change out old systems for new, and the savings could be huge. Old furnaces only see about 50 cents on the dollar spent on energy going into the home. Today we can get up to 98% efficient, so 98%, 98 cents on the dollar of the heat you produce on a 98 half you rated furnace goes into your home, so it's very efficient. So many people change the thermostat based on the temperature outside, but experts say to set a temperature on the thermostat and leave it. Other tips include changing air filters regularly and closing off unused rooms. And head on over to KTV.com for more money saving tips we have on there as the temperatures drop. Back to you. Some great tips there, Alicia. Thank you. Well, all parents want to know that their kids will be safe when they're sent off to school each day, which is why some area schools are using technology to try to make sure that happens. Catholic schools in the state are installing a new system called Hall Pass that is a background check system that scans anyone entering the building for sexual predators. Here's how it works. Each person that enters the school has to scan their driver's license. The system then alerts school leaders about if the visitor is a sexual predator. The system has already proven to be successful in at least one None instance. A firefighter with the Cato Volunteer Fire Department is arrested on suspicion of inappropriate contact with kids. Police say 45-year-old Charles Hank Hawkins resigned from his position a day after his arrest. Formal charges are pending, but Hawkins is being held without bond. The allegations involve kids ranging in age from 4 to 6 years old. Police say parents of those kids provided them with the evidence that their child had been a victim of one or more inappropriate sexual encounters. An eight-time parole absconder who is charged with murdering an 18-year-old man last May is being given new public defenders. Circuit Judge Chris Piazza denied the request of Daryl Dennis to represent himself, but he did allow his request for new public defenders. Despite that, Judge Piazza warned Dennis that he was making a mistake. Dennis stated that his previous lawyers had a conflict of interest because they represented him in a previous case. Dennis is accused in the kidnapping, robbery, and death of Forrest Abrams. At the time of the murder, Dennis was freed despite felony charges and parole violations. An Arkadelphia man who spent 11 years in prison after he was wrongfully convicted on a drug charge is now being awarded $460,000 by the State Claims Commission. Jerome Buckley was convicted of two counts of delivery of a controlled substance back in 1999 and sentenced to life in prison. Those convictions were vacated in 2010. The Claims Commission determined that there was, quote, irrefutable evidence that Keith Ray, an agent with the State Drug Task Force, fabricated evidence and committed perjury in that case. Well, a safety deposit box is supposed to be a safe place to store valuables. But now the gold jewelry one woman had stored there, collecting it since childhood, is gone. 
Channel 7's Matt Mershon joins us now with this story. Now, this is not a small sum of jewelry we're talking about no, here. No, Christina, her collection is valued conservatively at $250,000. Now, a desperate plea from the woman to find the person responsible. Some people collect coins. Some people collect stamps. To me, it was jewelry. For this woman, whose identity we're protecting for the chance she'd be targeted again, jewelry was her everything. She opened a safety deposit box here at the Metropolitan National Bank branch on Financial Center Parkway, assuming her valuables would be safe. But in September, after not checking the box for almost a year, she discovered everything was gone except her sterling silver and pearls. He must have soiled himself when he opened up that drawer and saw everything in there. The contents of the box were financial security for the future. Now not only was that stolen, but the memories behind each piece of jewelry. My mother died in her 40s, and she gave me an anklet to wear. I've always had an anklet on. I've never not had an anklet on till now. In a statement today from Simmons First Bank, new owners of Metropolitan National, they said, quote, based on our findings at this time, we have no reason to believe there was any wrongdoing on the part of Metropolitan National Bank. Now this woman is offering a $10,000 Crime Stoppers reward for the arrest and conviction of whoever is responsible. This person took our past and our future. If you have any information on this case, you're urged to call Little Rock Crime Stoppers. The number is at the bottom of your screen. And again, there is a $10,000 reward in this case. And we certainly help. Maybe this story will help um, bring and that person. Anyone with some information, I think they'd greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. Matt, thank you. Well, if you enjoyed the weather today, I assume you did. The next couple of days look to be even nicer and a touch warmer after the break. Ned Permy will tell us just how high those temps will climb and when we're going to see that rain that's headed our way. Stick around. Sky Cams, sponsored by Middleton Heat and Air. From the weather team with the most experience, this is Channel 7 Chief Meteorologist Ned Permy. We have a beautiful night going on with clear skies, light winds, and another cold night tonight. Temperatures have already fallen to the upper 30s and low 40s, down to the mid to upper 30s tonight as low temperatures are Middleton Sky Cam right now, showing us clear skies looking across the river bridges, and they are being lit up for a special occasion coming up, and that is going to be on Thursday. You're going to be hearing a lot more about that in the days to come as a big celebration is going to be taking place around the Clinton Library area. 41 degrees, clear skies right now and over the uh, downtown area and into the days to come. We are looking at rain on the way. The forecast, though, the nice news, as I mentioned, warmer temperatures, 62 tomorrow, a little bit cooler from our high today of 68, but 62 tomorrow, 65 Thursday, chance of rain being introduced late in the day and then 40% on Friday and Saturday, a whopping 80% chance of rain into Saturday night. So from Friday, all the way through Sunday morning, possibly two to three inches, many areas around the state, a little lesser amounts across the southern counties. These are the high temperatures today, 68 degrees, Little Rock 66 at Pine Bluff. Frontal boundary actually pushed through the state today, pretty much unnoticed other than a shift in the wind, and that's going to allow for slightly cooler air. The front is well south of us right now, and of course a northwesterly wind helping to bring in slightly cooler temperatures on Wednesday. But low pressure well out over the west. Western United States is going to begin to push a southwesterly wind flow into the region, bringing warmer temperatures and also lifting this front back as a warm front, bringing moisture back into the forecast. Temperature below freezing right now up at uh, Springfield, 28 there, 33. St. Louis, we're at 41, 44 at Shreveport, 38 at Memphis. So uh, still pretty cool air in place and warmer temperatures, though, definitely on the way as we're looking at one trough of low pressure causing a lot of snow over the northeastern United States. Another one moving into the southwest, and that's our weather maker. High pressure in between will bring warmer days ahead. Middleton Sky Cam, again, overlooking the downtown area off in the North Little Rock. Clear skies, 41 degrees, and calm winds right now. Temperatures currently already 35 degrees up around Russellville. 41 at Little Rock, 44 at Jonesboro, 40 at 
Fort Smith and 46 down at Texarkana. Now future cast is going to take us all the way through Thursday afternoon and we're definitely going to see warmer air in place but also as we run the end of this uh, model run we are going to see moisture increasing and there we go with a chance of showers moving in late in the day on Thursday as warm air and moisture increase from the Gulf of Mexico. 36 tonight and clear. Tomorrow a great day with a high of 62, mostly sunny conditions. And it looks like uh, most of the day on Thursday looking great. Chance of rain late and overnight increasing Friday. Temperatures will fall behind the new storm system that will bring in some very wet weather on Saturday and Saturday night. A lot of it. A lot of it. Two to three inches. That's right. a lot. We are ready. All right, Ned, thank you. Well, high school state football championships continue this weekend at War Memorial Stadium. Coming up at 1028, Sully previews the Glen Rose Beavers. They practice at the stadium today before taking on Charleston this Saturday. It is a scenario we are telling you about way too often. Another office shooting, this time at a Nevada medical building. The gunman and one other person are dead, and at least two others injured in the shooting at the Reno building. Authorities say a gunman went into a neurology office near the renowned medical center and opened fire. The shooter was reportedly struck several people before taking his own life. Police continue to investigate. National economists say the rich are getting richer and the rest of Americans are holding steady at best. Economists worry about what kind of impact that will have on the nation's economy. They point out that the higher pay and the biggest stock market gains are flowing mainly to affluent Americans, but that those households spend less of their money than the low and middle income Americans do. Spending by wealthier Americans, given the weight of their dollars, does help drive the economy, but analysts say the economy would be better able to sustain its growth if the richest were more evenly dispersed. Coming up in sports, highlights from Jonesboro as Arkansas State takes on undefeated Toledo, and you'll hear from a super fan who is headed to the Hall of Fame. And now, sports with Steve Sullivan. Tonight over in Jonesboro, ASU taking on undefeated Toledo. The Wolves get off to a good start. Kirk Van Slyke for three. Red Wolves by five. Van Slyke doing it all for ASU tonight. A little scramble underneath. Van Slyke not afraid to get in there. Dirty work there. The bucket. He had 22. ASU led by four at the break, but it was all rockets down the stretch. Toledo's pretty good. They moved to 10-0 with a 78 to 65 win. Hogs will be in action Thursday night against Tennessee Martin. Their holiday schedule games Thursday and Saturday, then they'll break for a few days for Christmas. We'll bring them back on the on Christmas Day. Uh, they'll get about three days off, and then we'll come back uh, Christmas Day. So uh, we won't get totally away from it, but but I think it'll give them a chance to go home and and, and spend time with the family and reflect. And uh, it's about giving. I think that's what this uh, when you talk about Christmas, the holidays, the holiday spirit. Uh, uh, it's a lot of a uh, lot of joy that takes place. And uh, and what better way to do it than to be playing some good basketball. Uh, uh, during this particular time of the year. I agree with Coach. You can see the game Thursday right here on Channel 7. Pre-game coverage begins at 6.30. New opportunity for Tyler Wilson. The former Razorback star is now a Tennessee Titan. Today, Tennessee released John Skelton to make room for Tyler on their 53-man roster. And news today from Coach Bielema that four players are looking at transferring. None of the four played a big role this season. Linebackers A.J. Turner and Mike Tavares, tailback Nate Holmes and quarterback Ray Buchanan Jr. are all looking to leave Fayetteville. We shared this news last night. Hogs Superfan Kanan Sandy of Cave City has earned a spot in ESPN's Fan Hall of Fame. So sometime in 2014, this great fan and his mom will be heading to Bristol, Connecticut for induction ceremonies. I'm a hog, wild hog fan. I'm as good as Barrett Hog fan. I did great news for me, my heart, my teammates. How do you think they're going to do next year? I thought my mother should give me. 14 the O. When we saw an advertising to nominate or to enter, we thought, wow, let's let's put uh, Kanan in. He had just won the um, University of Arkansas homecoming super fan. And so it was like, well, you know, we've just done it. Let's do it again.
There you go. And he's lucky to have a mom like that. Well, I know we're going to see some great fans this weekend at War Memorial. Glenn Rose worked out at the stadium today. Head coach Mark Keener has his Beavers back in the title game for the second straight season. A year ago, they got beat in the final seconds by Harding Academy. Here's coach on making back-to-back -back appearances in the big game. Yeah, new year, new opportunity. Uh, you don't know what the number of kids you've got coming back, if, if, if we've got the numbers to get it done. But these kids, of our seniors especially, have really stepped up, uh, led this team in the right direction, and just real, real fortunate to be back. And Coach says he hoped Ned nailed the forecast for Saturday. He doesn't want good weather for the game. No, I hope it's raining sideways and a hurricane's coming in. Uh, I don't know about Coach Kendrick, but uh, we feel real uh, fortunate that that's coming our way. Yeah, they like to run the ball. Charleston likes to throw the ball. That game Saturday at 630. And finally tonight, I want to show you a clip from last night's Sixers Nets game. The T-shirt throw during a timeout. Paul McCartney really wants a T-shirt. Look at him. Here comes the shirt. Ah, they took it away from him. Watch his reaction here. That was his. I like that he's... Oh, there's a chance that if you've been to the game, that becomes, you know, the T-shirt's probably worth a couple of bucks, but it's when you get it at a game, it's exciting. It, it is, that T-shirt throw. Good to see him even get excited it at the is. Nets game. I, I, like I don't seeing... think his wife was real excited, no, but he was. No, I didn't seem to care too much. <laughs> I like the 14-0 and 0 prediction. Yeah, by Kanan. Who knows? Fan. Hey, he's the super fan. When they may, may, prediction may come true. Eternal optimist. Yeah, I love go. it. Thanks so much. Well, Google has released their list of top searched athletes this year, and the top two might surprise you. After the break, we'll tell you who they are and what they have in common. Is that something you want to be known for? Dry and mild the next few days, all the way through Thursday, but by late Thursday, especially Friday into the weekend, we are looking at a good chance of rain coming in and then a little drop in temperatures, but no frozen precipitation uh, to worry about as we move in through the weekend. Possibly a little across extreme northern Arkansas as the storm system moves away, but not widespread. All right, well, Sully says they want rain. So, mm -hmm. hey, they're no, going to get rain. Rose. Glenn Rose okay, one rain. side wants rain. Sorry, <laughs> I right, don't want rain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. All right. Well, before we go tonight, what do the top two athletes of Google.com's most searched athletes of the year have in common? They're both accused of murder. The number one most searched athlete of the year worldwide is South African sprint runner Oscar Pistorius. He admitted to shooting and killing his model girlfriend. That was on Valentine's Day, but he said that it was an accident. Former New England Patriot Aaron Hernandez takes the number two spot. He is accused of killing his friend Odin Lloyd. Rounding out the top five for much different reasons, Minnesota Viking star Adrian Peterson is number three. College basketball star Kevin Ware is fourth. And disgraced cyclist Lance Armstrong is the fifth most searched athlete in the world. Pretty interesting. Hope you have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.